Hey everybody, we're down here in the shop tonight, sitting by the heater. I don't have a fire built this evening. It's been rainy and getting cool, but hasn't really been cold enough to worry about building a fire in the shop. So turned the old gas heater on, a little electric heater over here, and thought I'd do a quick little video. Um, it's been super muddy. We're in mud season here in Virginia right now. Um, We've had a ton of rain, and which we've needed. I'm not complaining. We've needed it. Um, so not being much to get out and do unless you want to just wade in the mud and make a mud hole. Uh, coming this coming week, we're giving, showing a chance of some decent snow, possibly. I don't believe it when I see it, but the temperatures are going to be cold. We're going to be down in the teens and single digits of the nights most of the week next week. I don't really expect to go to school that much. Um, we've had some high winds, a couple spells of high winds recently and things, and kind of had a wide variety of uh, weather. Um, but I am glad to get the moisture. But anyways, this video, we'll get into the content, um, is inspired by Facebook posts that I have seen recently primarily on john deere sites like i have been on facebook groups for kubota for several years now since i've had facebook but then i joined the a john deere group after we got the 5045e and I've, people on there ask a lot of questions like i don't i don't know it's uh, it's like first time maybe it's a first time tractor owners uh, I don't, I don't know, but one that gets asked a lot, and this one absolutely blows my mind, is what RPM should I run my tractor at? That's all they'll say most of the time. Sometimes they'll give a, they'll give some like scenarios, which that's understandable, but. Uh, I see that a lot. What RPM should I run my tractor at? And that's a loaded question. Like, what kind of tractor do you have? What are you doing with it? What kind of terrain do you have? Uh, are you using PTO powered implements? Are you using a front end loader? Are you using three point dirt moving attachments? I mean, what are you doing with that tractor? You have to think of all those concepts. Like there's not, in my opinion, there's not a foolproof answer to what RPM should I run my tractor at. Had to move. About to catch on fire. Um, like, I, I struggle sometimes. I've been around tractors. I, I'm going to say all my life because that's not lying. Um, growing up, I've always kind of been mechanically inclined and interested and when I see these type questions, it blows my mind. I'm not putting these people down because they don't genuinely probably don't know. But it's something I've never thought about discussing on a video until now. Um, you know, on the older tractors, stuff that I grew up with, non-emissions, most of us have grown up with if we was around equipment. Um, you know, you could... You could idle them tractors around, or you could do whatever. You didn't have to worry. You could let them sit and idle all day long, and uh, really didn't matter. Now, things are different with the emissions on tractors and that type of thing. Even the ones that don't have particulate filters, you still have EGRs, uh, exhaust gas recirculators, and that type of thing on them. Um, you know, you can say, well, my tractor's a non-emissions tractor. To some extent, you're right, like some of the newer John Deere's or the Massey Ferguson's, but you still have something there that is cutting down on that emit, that smoke, and you need to keep those tractors, you know, running somewhat hot. So I'm going to relate this video more to the newer tractors with emissions or with the EGR, the systems or the catalyst systems that's put on some of these tractors so if you're hooking up implements um 
and that type of thing to your tractor, you know, uh, when you're not going to be long, you can let the tractor idle at its lower RPM, and while you're not listening to it, if you try to adjust your three-point hitch, it's not moving fast, you can fine-tune it and that type of thing. Same way with hooking up stuff on your loader, idle that tractor down where you got good control of it, and uh, can get latched onto your equipment without jumping and jerking around. Now, PTO powered implements. In my opinion, you should run them somewhere in the 540 PTO range, not above, but you can run them a little less. Sometimes I run my tractor a little bit less than the 540 PTO RPM. Your, the way you know that, your tractor should have on the uh, tachometer, it should have a line that shows when your um, needle is engine RPM is up in line with the 540 PTO RPM, which is two separate RPMs. Um, this Kubota behind me, it has a digital indicator that tells you when you're at 540. Sometimes I'll run mine down to, you know, if I'm bailing hay that's dry and I don't want to uh, shred it to death, you know, to where the, the PTO's running at full speed, I'll run it down, you know, 500 RPM sometimes to run that PTO a little bit slower so I'm not shredding my hay up. All this stuff is situational. Um, a lot of times when I'm doing dirt work with the Kubota and using the loader and that type thing, I'm running 15 to 1800 RPMs. Hardly ever go above that. Sometimes if I get to pushing real hard or something, I will. Um, but 15 to 1800 RPMs is where I like to run it. Um, you got a foot throttle. Use it. I mean, a lot of times if I'm loading hay, I'll set my hand throttle at maybe 1200 RPMs. That way when I'm stopped, got my clutch and brake in, the loader still works smooth with a decent speed and I'm not all the way down at an idle. But in between picking up bales and going to the trailer or going to where I'm staging them, I'll use that foot throttle, rev the tractor up, you know, to a good tram speed and uh, go to where I'm going, so idle it down, re release from the bell, you know, get back on the foot throttle, just like you're driving a vehicle. Um, same way of shifting gears, getting up to road speed. Use that foot throttle. Shift, you know, run your RPMs up, let off, shift, get back into them, just like you're driving a manual shift vehicle. Most of these tractors now are synchronized easy to shift on the fly, use it, take advantage of it. That's why it's there. Uh, I'm not going to say there's really a right or a wrong to what RPM you run it. What is the right RPM is use it to where you're comfortable with it. But remember on these emissions machines, keep your RPMs up to where that it's burning hot enough to not set and clog up your emission systems, your EGR valves, your, deep, your particulate filters, and that type of thing. Um, <clears throat> a common answer to this question, and these people have watched too much Tractor Time with Tim, is all I can say, is they say, run your tractor wide open at full throttle. Do not run your tractor at full throttle. Don't do that in every situation. That is not. You don't get on your tractor and go to do any variety of tasks and run it wide open. I mean, that's not, that's not right. With hydrostatic transmissions, you do need to run a higher RPM than a gear drive to get that pump for your hydrostatic system to pump and get enough to where it's got power to move you and work whatever you're working. But as far as pulling her wide open, that drives me bonkers. I can't stand that. Uh, when I hear people do it, when I see people doing it on videos, don't do that, please. That's just running your tractor to death. You're burning more fuel. Run it at a sufficient RPM to do the task, but don't overdo it. Um, the only time I ever run my tractor at full throttle is if I'm in the highest, highest gear of the tractor and I'm on the road. Um, or I'm under a hard pull. Sometimes if I'm on the road pulling a baler and I have to drop a gear and it's still low, you know, still on a hard steep hill, I'll hold it wide open because you're 
you're not like beating an engine to death because it's under a load. When you're just lightly running it around and running it wide open, and that's just hard on them, I think. It may not be, but uh, I don't like it. Uh, especially, I mean, prices of fuel these days, save what you can save, right, you know. Um, that's sign I want a tractor time with Tim's common answers. It's run or wide open. Some of these experts on YouTube, I ain't talking about stuff, about but I don't know about them. Um, another thing, going back to him, is he's he's real negative towards gear drive machines. He said you can't you can't vary the speed of your tractor like you can, and uh, infinitely vary the speed of your tractor like you can with a hydrostatic. All right, you have all these gears that you can choose from. In between those gears, if you're doing three-point blade work, if you're doing something besides PTO work, you can vary that throttle in between each gear to fast or slow yourself, you know, speed up or slow yourself down. Take advantage of your RPMs. Use them to your advantage. Use them to where that the tractor's performing what it should be. If I'm down here in the woods and I'm grading these roads where it's steep and rocky and stuff and I'm going through the dirt where it's pretty good, I'll rev that thing up and let it go whatever in whatever gear I'm in at a pretty good little click. When I get to those rocky spots, throttle it back a little, leave it in the same gear, grade through them and go on. You know, Be smart about what you're doing. Just be smart about it. Take care of your machines. Um, I don't know what else to add. I just wanted to throw some of that stuff out there. If you have input, you can leave it in the comments. I'll try not to get mad at you. Um, if you believe running the tractor wide open is the right thing to do, uh, you do that and you be wrong, I guess is what I'm going to say to that situation because I don't like it. Um, not being arrogant by that. I'm just being using some common sense. Uh, you don't drive your car wide open. Uh, anything else I can add to that? You know, one feature this Kubota has that I like, and and I see a lot of people on YouTube too, they, they don't understand what it's for. It has an RPM management feature, and some other tractors might have RPM management. Okay, on flat ground, you'll probably never notice it does anything. Around here, when I'm bailing hay or I'm mowing my, my disc mower, I will set that RPM management. What that does, when I'm headed up a hill, it will throttle that tractor up to give it a little more power. Um, going up the hill, maintains your RPMs, but it gives you more throttle. Now you're going, you know, if you're going up something really steep, you're going to lose power regardless, but it might help you. Um, by throttling it up, you may still have to stop and drop a gear. Another thing, you head off a steep slope, especially with a round bailer, it will throttle the tractor down so that it doesn't rev above 540 RPM going down a hill. Really nice feature, I think. I use it a lot when I'm mowing with a disc mower and when I am bailing hay. Uh, other than that, I hardly ever use it, but it is nice for that. But anyways, all this applies to about any tractor brand, in my opinion. Um, the older stuff, you know, if you want to let it sit in idle, if it don't have emissions on it, I don't see that's going to hurt. That old 245 I've got, my Uncle Ray, he put around on that thing at, you know, 11, 1200 RPMs doing a whole lot of stuff, and uh, it never negatively affected it. It might such you, you know, I just do what you want to. It'll make it smoke a little more, but who cares about that? Um... Yeah, I guess that's it. Hopefully we'll get back, have a chance to make some action videos and stuff here soon, doing some stuff. Uh, probably be playing in the mud or the snow or the ice. Um, if the ground freezes up, I got some wood I'd like to cut, but I ain't gonna get out and tramp around the mud for it. Uh, I need to fix the heater and stuff on the International. Um, it only works on high. I'm gonna have to try to figure that out. 
But um, hope you all enjoyed this video. May have helped somebody. May have offended somebody. If it did, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, leave it in the comments. Let me know what you thought. If you have anything else to add, add it. And uh, appreciate y'all watching. Thanks for the ones over that subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed, please do that. If you don't leave a like, please leave a like. Whether you like the video or not, please leave a thumbs up because it helps the channel. It helps everybody's channel. If you watch a video on YouTube, give them a thumbs up because it helps them. Unless they're just a complete idiot. And you may think I am, which I kind of am sometimes. But uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.